I love to share my story. Uh, that's how other people are going to learn and grow and feel like they're not the only one. If you're not afraid to talk in front of your 5,000 of your closest friends who share your same story, then uh, go ahead and do it. Met some people, talked about where we're from, what we do, talked about the classes coming up today. Uh, it was fantastic. It was great. This is the Facility Management Innovator Podcast, where we talk with FM industry leaders about workplace trends, challenges, and the future of the built environment. This show is brought to you by KRL Connections, providing information, consulting, and marketing expertise to help organizations deliver workplace innovation to the facility management community. Hey there, and how's it going? FM innovators everywhere. It's Mike Petresky just back from San Diego after an amazing week at IFMA's World Workplace. Were you there? Did you get as much out of this awesome event as I did? I sure hope so. If you did not make it to World Workplace this year, not to worry, you have come to the right place, or should I say, the right podcast. We will do our very best here to give you just a little taste of all that went on in San Diego, but really there is so, so much, I don't know how we're going to cover it all. In fact, this is episode six of the Facility Management Innovator Podcast, and it will be a supersized one for sure, as I had the privilege of interviewing not one, not two, but three FM innovators during my time at World Workplace this week. Wow, get ready for some really good stuff. Now, the theme of the conference this year was the FM story is ours to share, and it was great. The speakers at the opening session did a wonderful job, really inspirational. There were so many good education sessions. I had the opportunity to moderate a couple of them, which was very cool. The Expo Hall had so much to offer in the way of innovative products and solutions from our industry partners, and it was huge. I was just being pulled in so many different directions. I could not get to see everyone I was hoping to, which is the only thing that disappointed me all week. But what else? We got to hear from IFMA's leadership about their new collaboration with our friends from across the pond, RICS. I won't bore you with my attempt at a British accent, but it's very exciting to see IFMA and RICS starting this working together to define professional standards for the FM world and building a global network for knowledge sharing, best practices, and shared resources. I got to spend some time with my friends from the IFMA Foundation, and they continue to do a fantastic job elevating FM and working so hard to raise up the next generation of facility professionals. And of course, no world workplace is complete without a little bit of fun, right? We could not have asked for better weather. The marina area just outside the hotels and convention center was amazing. The welcome reception on the USS Midway aircraft carrier was just awesome. It really is hard to describe how cool that was. And the ability to walk across the street and be right in the heart of San Diego, the gas lamp quarter they call it, was just incredible. Great restaurants, networking receptions, happy hours. Should I just say hashtag club court? Many of you will know what I mean. Wow, that was next level stuff, right? For a second, I felt like I was in a Pitbull video or something. Unbelievable. DJ dropped the beat. Good times, good times. So let's get to our interview, shall we? I had such a great time talking to these three FM professionals who each have their own perspective and different roles within the world of facility management. As is so often the case, just talk with three FMs and you'll get three completely unique insights. It makes it so much fun. First, we will hear from Rhonda Rezac. She is from Minneapolis, don't you know? (laughs) Rhonda was a real sport as I asked her about her Minnesota accent, and we talked about real sports, so that was pretty cool too. You will hear. It was fantastic. Next, we get to hear from Wonder Woman herself, Carolyn McGarry. She is the president of IFMA's Denver chapter, and oh yeah, by the way, she was on the stage at the opening session of World Workplace. That's right, Carolyn told her FM story and did so with a clever, superhero-inspired theme that was really great. Finally, we'll hear from one of our own from the Capital Chapter of IFMA. Corey McKnight is a former Marine and the Facilities Director for the City of Winchester, Virginia. As you will hear, we may both be from D.C. and we may both be in the same chapter, but we needed to fly all the way across the country to San Diego in order to actually meet in person. Amazing. So here we go. Enjoy. We are in beautiful San Diego at IFMA's World Workplace, right here high atop the Expo Hall, above the Expo Hall, literally. We are in the Convention Center. You can maybe hear in the background some hustle and bustle of all kinds of activity going on. 
just beneath us, but I do have a guest today, so please introduce yourself to our audience. Hello, my name is Rhonda Rizak. I'm with the Minneapolis St. Paul chapter of IFMA, and I work for a company called RSPI Space, where I do FM consultancy as well as enduring the pain of being an FM within my own building. Multiple hats dual responsibility of being both an FM practitioner and an industry partner. Yes, which creates quite uh, an empathetic way of doing business because whenever I talk to FMs and they tell me their story, I'm like, I completely understand. It um, creates really good relationships because it allows me to share stories of my own experiences and makes them feel like they are not the only one going out there. And we can swap stories and build a relationship off of that. So let's talk a little bit more about you personally. We did meet briefly, but I didn't know you really until your face was in my mailbox every day on an IFMA brochure. <laughs> yes. Then, that. How did that come about where you, were, you weren't on the stage today, but you were one of the st- featured stories in the brochure that was leading up to this conference? I love to share my story. Uh, that's how other people are going to learn and grow and feel like they're not the only one. And so when IFMA reached out to me and said, would you share your story about why coming to you if my world workplace is so important to you I was like heck yeah I want more people to come to this because this at the end of this I feel so recharged about what I'm doing and I know I'm making a difference when I leave here it's that feeling that, that gratification at the end of it so tell me what it's like in Minneapolis St. Paul when you when I asked you to be a part of this podcast you responded via text you betcha <laughs> you betcha. And that's from that's that's one of your key uh, signature phrases there. It is that one, and I'm bringing back oh geez. <laughs> so many of us only know the the stereotypical accent from movies. Fargo, yes. Oh gosh, I'm wondering if I can pull one of those out. Oh yeah, you betcha. Got to get the twang in there. If you get outside the metropolitan area, it gets pretty thick. Um, especially up by Fargo. That's why when they made that movie, I couldn't give it too much grief because it gets spot on in some of those areas. Wow. Were you born and raised in Minneapolis? Born and raised. I, you had asked earlier about um, kind of the weather and stuff that's going on up there because everyone's afraid of Minnesota because it snows. It gets so cold up there. It does, but right now, believe it or not, I'd rather be in Minneapolis than San Diego because this is the most beautiful time of the year. It is about 70 degrees, which it is here. But there's this cool crispness that comes through at night. All of our leaves are changing to the nice orange and yellow and reds. It's just beautiful. And apples. We have so many apples. We go to the apple orchards. We go on hay rides. I mean, it's the most beautiful time of the year. And you get a bonfire every night. It is wonderful. So how about them Vikings? Are you excited? Are you a Minnesota Vikings fan? Look, I'm turning into you. You Minnesota Vikings? Minnesota. Minnesota. I love the Vikings. I love the Minnesota Wild even more. We are the state of hockey. So I do put the Minnesota Wild above the Vikings, but I have to admit, holy cow, they are doing fantastic this year. I'm giving all the credit to Zimmer. He, like, they could be doing horrible the first half. Something happens in that locker room at halftime, and they come back out, and you're like, whoa, this is fantastic. That's, that's awesome, by the way. <laughs> fantastic. So um, this podcast is all about finding solutions for the built environment, facing challenges. You have to face some challenges in your job. Please tell me about some of those. Oh, my current challenge. Well, you know, it's like we've been in our building for, I want to say, 15 years now dealing with the same workstation layout and the workplace evolves. And so really what I want to get out of this conference here is working, um, looking at workplace evolutionaries, the we group, and how they are convincing people that they need to change to help retain and hire really good employees going forward. Especially with an architectural firm, you get interior designers in there, they have pretty high expectations. And so I want to make sure that we have the correct environment, not only because we're an architectural firm, but also because working, how you work has changed so much in the last 15 years. It's more about collaboration, less about me and my office. So talk to those listening. We have a lot of industry partners who will be listening to this, and they are trying to do their best to be a resource to the FM community. I'm always trying to get them to be in that mode of building a culture of collaboration and bringing their their expertise to the table. What are you going to tell them as far as the best way to approach an FM practitioner and then also really prove their value to FMs? 
So even in the Minneapolis chapter, we have all of our associate members. And the first thing I tell them when they come on board is listen and learn. Facility managers have so much that they, they want to share, but they want to know that you actually do care about what they're doing. They don't have time to be sold to 24-7. They are working so hard that if you can share with them tips and tricks on how to make their life easier, they're going to want to come back to you and ask you more questions and you're going to start to build that relationship and that's where you get the business. Show them that you genuinely care about what they do. Well, Rhonda, thank you so much for taking time to share some of your words with us. And always my opinion. Thank you. You know, there is a rumor going around San Diego this week that the FM story is ours to share. It's true. It's true. And we are here. I have a special treat for you all. So please, introduce yourself to our FM Innovator Nation. Hi, I'm Carolyn McGarry. I'm a facility manager for JLL, and I am an FM superhero. Yes, you are. You are Wonder Woman, one of the featured speakers that shared their FM story at the conference opening session this week. You spoke in front of a very large crowd, Carolyn. A few thousand of I my think it was closest friends. <laughs> That's right. I think it was close to 5,000 people. How did you prepare for that? Um, we found out about 10 weeks prior that our poorly made, handmade videos that we uploaded to YouTube and sent to uh, the staff were the winners, lucky winners. Congratulations. So wait, this was like a America's Got Talent or IFMA's Got Talent audition call and you put a video in on YouTube? Pretty much. Wow. Pretty much. They're like, we want people to share their story. If you're not afraid to talk in front of your 5,000 of your closest friends who share your same story, then uh, go ahead and do it. I told my entire chapter, you guys should do this. You should enter. I'm not sure if any of the other ones did, but I was lucky enough to be chosen as one of them. And that's when the real fun began. I was going to say, it was a great choice. And for those of you who were not here in San Diego this week, it was one of the most inspiring and really uh, entertaining opening sessions I've seen in the several world workplaces I've been to. And I think because so many people could relate to at least one or more of the stories that were told. How did you prepare? Because I know that everybody up there looked like they were professional speakers and it wasn't by accident. You definitely had to do some practice. Definitely. There were six of us chosen and they hired a professional speaker coach. A TEDx coach, uh, Terry Lepofsky. Yeah, he was good. He, he spoke a little briefly before bringing you all out and prepared us and got the crowd motivated. Kind of like a warm-up act for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, got everybody ready for what they were going to see, which was the first time they've ever done something like this at a World Workplace. So I have to ask you, this week has got to be something of a surreal experience. I mean, you are a celebrity now within the IFMA world, the FM community loves you because of your your time on stage. What's that like to be walking around the conference, walking around the exhibit hall, and just people recognize you now everywhere you go? It's true. I, I don't think I was quite prepared for how many people would stop me in the hallway or just yell, Wonder Woman or Superwoman, hey! You have <laughs> a brand, absolutely. And um, has anybody asked you for your autograph? Nobody yet has asked for my autograph. Well, I'll be the first one. I actually I got your autograph, so I'm gonna, that's gonna be worth you something did. someday. So I take that back. You were the first one to ask for my autograph. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you were billed as the overachiever of the crowd, and that is a very appropriate title, knowing that I'm looking at your your name badge, the the, <laughs> the number of ribbons cascading from your name badge right now. Have you counted these? How many different? ribbon designations do you have here? Uh, 21. You actually did count. 21, I see <laughs> CFM, I see SFP, IFMA Foundation, Speaker, Moderator, FMP, LinkedIn Connections, it goes on and on, Mentor. So it is not an ex exaggeration that you are the overachiever. You said in your talk that FMs are the real life superheroes. Tell me about that. So I had to come up with what I wanted to talk about, what my passion was, and our first session was essentially what, what's your message? What are you going to convey? You need a beginning, middle, and end, and you need, you need the crowd to be able to take something away from that. And my big thing was 
I want people to understand the need for an increased number of accredited degree programs. I need them to realize that we call ourselves the accidental profession and we need to make it an intentional one because we really do need to take action now and save our world of FM. And I wanted to have a fun way of relating that. Well, tell me more about our nemesis because we, you did have an uh, impassioned call to action. And uh, so who is the, the, the villain out there for the FM community? Our villain is essentially, in a nutshell, the aging workforce, lack of knowledge of facility management as a career, as well as that, that talent gap that results from that. It's an amazing challenge we face, and you're going to talk about that this afternoon. I'm moderating a session here. Kids can grow up to be superheroes. That's, that's the theme you have with the, <laughs> some of the, the uh, foundation initiatives. So tell me more about that. Um, yeah, that was my theme. That was another piece is we, we hear a lot about how kids want to grow up and they want to be doctors and they want to be astronauts. And, and because we have such a hard time explaining what facility management is, they don't know that they can grow up and be facility management superheroes. I mean, just think about any fun commercial you've ever seen. The kid's got a little towel strapped to his shoulders. He's running around and he thinks he's Superman. Show him how, how facility managers are like Superman and it's going to click for them. More of them are going to want to be facility managers. I think it's great. I think it's a wonderful initiative. Really awesome what you're doing and I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. I feel like I've, I've landed the star of the show to be on my little podcast. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Be careful flying home. <laughs> See what I did there? I've got another special guest with me today. Please introduce yourself. Tell us who you are and uh, where you're from. My name is Corey McKnight. I'm the facilities director for the city of Winchester in Winchester, Virginia. Just a little bit outside of Washington, D.C., Corey is a Capital Chapter member. And it took us uh, a couple years and a trip across the country to actually meet in person. <laughs> definitely, definitely, yes. How far outside of D.C.? It's about an hour, maybe a little over an hour in the Shenandoah Valley. Beautiful country out there. And uh, what is it you do specifically on a on a day-to-day -day basis? So uh, on a daily basis, uh, I take care of all the city-owned properties uh, from the smallest uh, little two, 300 square foot uh, George Washington Museums to 80,000 square foot courthouse. The city of Winchester has a unique history uh, that you know dates back to the Civil War. Uh, it turned over hands between the North and the South 77 times. Wow. Uh, that's a lot. You got to be a Civil War buff to know that type of fact. Yes. That type of trivia. Yes. How do you become a buff? as George Costanza once asked. You know, just through living there, through osmosis of everybody that is so deep into the history. Uh, I grew up in Wisconsin, and I don't try to tell people that, you know, because, you know, that's the north and they You're have on the issues. wrong side of the I'm Mason on the wrong Dixon side, line. yes. <laughs> but uh, so two of the properties that I take care of, uh, one of them is the George Washington headquarters. Uh, when he was a surveyor, he was in Winchester, and it's only about <clears throat> two or 300 square feet. Uh, but it's a little museum. And then uh, Stonewall Jackson headquarters uh, is a house uh, right down from our library that uh, they give tours to. Uh, the ladies that work there, they dress in the authentic Civil War garb. Uh, you know, it's 96 degrees in the middle of summer and they're in their wool outfits. Oh, wow. That's, that's <laughs> uh, some hard labor, but but it really makes it cool for the for the good visitors. It, it's kind of like Colonial Williamsburg, right? It really makes yeah, it interesting. True. Yeah, and, and we, do, uh, we do relate a lot to Colonial Williamsburg. Uh, we have a downtown walking mall uh, that we recently uh, renovated, put seven and a half million dollars into, and have some state-of-the-art facilities like a splash pad and uh, a restroom called an Exalu. Wow, what's what's that all about? It's European. <laughs> well, it sounds fancy. <laughs> it is. It's it's a self-cleaning restroom. So after so many uses or so many uh, so much time, uh, the door will lock and it'll actually clean itself with uh, spray heads and blowers. That's awesome. So innovative technology being implemented in the facility, literally in the facilities. Yes, in the facilities, uh, definitely. We're, uh, we're one of uh, 25 uh, units in the United States. <laughs> well, let's talk about World Workplace because here we are in beautiful San Diego at the convention center right now. 
and talking as the expo hall is open below. You've spent some time down in the exhibitors uh, hall. Definitely, yep. So what is it you look for? What do you like to see? And, and what's most effective when it comes to catching your attention as an FM practitioner? So this is my third World Workplace, and it seems like every year when I come to the World Workplaces, I'm in the middle of different projects, and they've never failed me. This year, we just put the final touches on a design remodel for our city hall. It's 116 years old. So, you know, we're going from everybody having a little square office to some open spaces, so trying to get some innovative, innovative technology as far as uh, workspaces. This year, they didn't fail me. There were a lot of work areas, retractable desks that raise and lower different types of uh, flooring uh, for different types of traffic. So it's actually been very, very successful this year. Perfect, and so let's talk more about the conference here and the educational sessions going on. What has caught your eye and what did you learn so far? We've got another day or so of education ahead of us, but what have you learned so far here in San Diego? So the first class I went to uh, this morning was learning to surf chaos instead of drowning in it. Like every other FM, you know, you're constantly inundated with phone calls and emails and paperwork and, you know, it's never ending. And uh, it was a great class to go to because, you know, your brain is, is made to function one way. Uh, and the key to this class is trying to not keep everything inside your brain. Write it down, send yourself an email, put it on a piece of paper. Try to limit the amount of stuff you have floating around inside your noodle. Uh, it, it was great. Uh, it's about prioritizing and organizing your life so that you can kind of make things flow a little easier. We can all certainly use a little more of that and it sounds like in your day-to-day -day that's essential Definitely. to keep, keep on top of so many responsibilities. So what about the, I don't want to be remiss and forget, we had our big welcome reception on the USS Midway aircraft carrier. What was what was your takeaway there? It was fantastic. I hadn't been on a naval vessel. It's not called a boat. Good. <laughs> it's called a vessel. Um, I learned what the head was, by the way. There yes, was a little, yes, the head. We, well, it's we like heard the Exolu, only not excellent, right? <laughs> exactly. We got a theme run here in this interview, yeah, so I'm not yeah. sure how much we want to emphasize that. Yeah. But no, it was. It was. Uh, tell me more about the vessel. Yeah, it was great. Uh, I've never been on an aircraft carrier before. My brother served on an aircraft carrier. He was in the Navy. Uh, I have a military family, so uh, it was. It was just so neat. And they put on a great show. The food was great. The band was fantastic. Everybody was just having a really good time. I sat down at a table. Uh, met some people, talked about where we're from, what we do, talked about the classes coming up today. Uh, it was fantastic. It was great. Always a great opportunity to meet people from all over the country, all over the world really. There were some people from West Africa that I was talking to the other day. It's just amazing to have this experience and be here in San Diego together. Thanks for taking some time to talk to us, Corey. No problem. Thank you. There you go. Rhonda Rezac, Carolyn McGarry, and Corey McKnight. Recorded live at IFMA's World Workplace 2016. Wow, was that fun or what? I really enjoyed my week in San Diego, and I hope you did too. I had so many great conversations with many of you, and if only I could have recorded all of them. Would have been great, right? Well, maybe not all of them. If you did not make it out to San Diego, then I hope we were able to bring a little bit of World Workplace to you, wherever you may be. I really enjoy putting these podcasts together, and I continue to be amazed by the people I get to meet and talk to, and I really hope you too are enjoying these conversations as well. If you are, please let us know. Don't hesitate to drop me a note, leave a rating, leave a review over at iTunes. It really helps a lot. And please continue to tune into the podcast for more great fun and excitement. Until next time, as Wonder Woman Carolyn McGarry tells us, be an FM superhero. And I hope you now are even more inspired to be an FM innovator. Peace out. You've been listening to the Facility Management Innovator Podcast. We hope you found this discussion beneficial as we work together to elevate the FM community by building partnerships that lead to innovative workplace solutions. For more information about facility management collaboration and marketing resources, visit krelconnections.com.